Um, when did you discover the blues as a, as a vocal? What, what were you listening to besides your family mm -hmm. before the blues? Before you, the blues. I mean, you know, I, I know I grew up similar time. Yeah. My dad had on yeah. Frank Sinatra, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, those 50s, vo 40s vocalists and all. Um, so I heard a lot of that stuff. I heard a lot. My, my dad was not a record collector or mm -hmm. anything, so we didn't have that much stuff at home for me to yeah. opera yeah. and things. But I, I liked folk music okay. a little bit, you know, I liked, and I liked uh, James Taylor and, yeah. and singer-songwriters okay. like that. I knew there was something there for me. Right. I just didn't know quite what until I was given uh, a little Walter record as my oh, yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah, my first record, I think, was... Uh, Hate to see you go. Oh boy. Yeah. And then they brought me uh, my friends in high school. Yeah. Then they brought me a, a Elmore James record. Okay. Right. And I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah. This is cool stuff. And I started trying to, to decipher. I was just spinning those records mm -hmm. day and night. And they said, you were starting a band. We play blues. We got two horn players and we need a singer. Mm -hmm. Give it a shot. Yeah, I'll try that yeah. too. What, was this was this kind of in the era like you just said two horn players was this in the era that that roomful would have been yeah. popular in where you were growing up yeah and, that's a good tie-in because yeah so so a lot of bands were were using that as their template for a band yes you know yes where when I was growing up every we saw the Beatles so every band had <laughs> you know two guitars a bass and a drum yeah yeah. Uh, I didn't have horns for long. Uh -huh. We were called Linseed Sam and the Oilers. You know? <laughs> it had nothing to do with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a guitar player we used to call Linseed Sam. I don't know yeah. how that happened. And then we, then after a while, I dropped the horns, and we had a band called Arm and Hammer, a blues oh, band, for okay. years That's and years. That's cool. And that yeah. was a hard-driving blues band with a harmonica player who, who wasn't me. Wasn't you? You were you know? just the vocalist. Then. Yeah, yeah. Good harmonica player who styled himself after. Uh, Charlie Musselwhite. Right, who right. Now I'm good friends with him. We play together. Yeah. You know, it's amazing yeah. how these things happen. That's right, you that's never right. never expect. I know. Uh, yeah, but uh, I was, the drinking age back then was 18. 18, yeah. You know, so I was going down to see Roomful, standing outside, listening through the window, mm -hmm. or sneaking in sometimes y yeah. if I could, before, you know, underage. Right. And then I would go. It was a weekly thing. Mm -hmm. I, I got, got to tell the story of the Knickerbocker. And, oh, yeah. Because it was a weekly thing, and uh, you never know who Roomful would be bringing in there. I'd see one week was Helen Humes yeah. and uh, Eddie Clinton and Vincent and wow. Big Joe Turner. Big Joe Turner, and sure. And then Sil Austin and then Red Price Act. I mean, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm seeing all this as a youngster. Right. Wow. Uh, it was great. Yeah. I've always said Roomful was very important for, the, for keeping the blues alive in the Northeast. Absolutely. That, you know, in, the, in the Texas, you had you know, the fabulous Thunderbirds, and out west, you had uh, Piazza and the Flyers and the Hollywood Fats Band. Yes. And in the east, you had, well, you had the Nighthawks down in, yeah. in the D.C. area, mm -hmm. but you ha we, had, we were lucky. We yeah, had Roomful who, here. We were sp spawning ground for yeah. so many others, That's like right. myself. That's know. right. That's right. So when did the harp come into you, you know, into well, your this particular, vocabulary? This particular harmonica player uh, was drinking and mm -hmm. not showing up for gigs, and I was messing with the harmonicas because my dad, again, mm -hmm. was a great harmonica player. Not in the blues field, but uh, like cowboy songs okay. and uh, yeah. traditional uh, folk tunes. Right. Uh, really good. I'm not just saying he, you know, yeah. pulled around with it. He had this tongue blocking method and, and tricks he could play and, mm -hmm. and he could imitate animals and it was a great right. trains. So uh, I was messing around with it, and when the harmonica player didn't show up, I started playing, and the band went, "Hey, you know." Tell him to stay home. <laughs> yeah, because you sound pretty good. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah. Man. How, now you you say you know your dad was a harmonica player, but I'm I'm always curious. Like a guitar player, you can watch somebody, mm. and you can you can go sit in your car ten minutes later and figure out how do you learn as a harmonica player what yeah. the 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 masters, the Charlie Musselwhite, the Cottons, the Big Walter Hortons. How, how do you learn to? How do you get a lesson from them by watching them? How do you figure it out? How do you figure it's it hidden, out? Really. It is, yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. I will say it's all a matter of trial and error. Because uh -huh. you know, there's a lot of uh, tongue work and there's a lot of uh, 
breathing yeah, and how yeah. you, where you, the placement of your breath, it's like singing. Right, right. I always say I sing through the harp. You, you know? do. I was going to ask you about the relationship yeah. between your vocals and the harmonica. Uh, to me, it's very re related. Yeah, yeah. It comes from deep within my diaphragm. You right. Know, and the, I can mimic my voice with a harp. I yeah. do it all the time because, you know, you play, you sing, and then you play some, and then you sing, and yeah. you play some, and you, you kind of... Uh, call and answer with yourself sure and but to figure it out it's just uh, it's just hours and hours of you know I mean it was years before I even knew that you know you use different key harmonicas for different songs sure so if right. you don't know that yeah you're not going very far no no <laughs> why don't I sound like him <laughs> you figure it out yeah. yeah yeah is there a lot of listening to records too and trying to that's what I was that's what I was doing yeah I, mean, I yeah. still do it to yeah. this day you know sure sure especially the little Walter stuff it's yeah just, well, I know everybody talks about Little Walter, and yeah. he's such an iconic harmonica. He's a, the Jimi Hendrix of harmonica. But I know you have a special relationship with Big Walter yes. Horton. And, and what should people know about him that, that we don't know? He had a, a great sense of humor. Uh -huh. I'll always remember that. Yeah. You know? uh, he didn't like his picture being taken, though. Yeah. That's when his sense of humor disappeared uh -huh. quickly. Uh -huh. He could be a cantankerous right. goat. Yeah. He's called me old goat, you know. Uh, but he we, he was great to work with as a harmonica player. What what's his? Yeah. You know why would we put him on the Mount Rushmore of harmonica players? What what was his? Yeah. For him, it would be uh, the first word that comes to my mind is tone. Okay. Tone, tone, mm -hmm. tone. It's deep. It's rich. It's full. Yeah. You know, and uh, of course his his playing and his his uh, way of thinking and moving around the the harp. Right, is is stylistic. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as I hear, it, put a big Walter record. You put a record on, and if it's Big Walter, I know you immediately know. that it's him. Yeah, yeah. Which is what every musician aspires to have know, that to have that distinctive. Sure. And his happens to be one of the greatest ever. Yeah. Right. Right. We had a ball with him though. He taught the blue tone so much. You yeah. Know, musically. Yeah. Uh, not. He would never sit down and say, let me show you something. Right. No, it's not his style. You, know? yeah. you just have to, you have to observe. Mm -hmm. But uh, his sense of timing would not always be right on. If you're a musician, you know, a one, four, five right. progression, and yeah. you know when to change. Yeah. He didn't always change. Right. At the right time, in yeah. the right place. Yeah. And so we'd always you know, have to be keeping our ears and eyes open. Yeah. Oh, he's going there. Right. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's be with them. Yeah. And that's going to help you out then when you're playing with some of the other legends who have their own sound and style. Yes. That, you know, because Walter taught you those lessons of yes. listen, pay attention, follow pay me. Pay attention. And another thing I learned from him was, you know, we'd supply him with an amplifier mm -hmm. and even a microphone, you know, and it didn't matter. He didn't get upset like, oh, no, not that amp. Yeah. Well, what, what is my amp? No. He, he'd give me the end of the microphone cord and say, you know, plug this in for me, would you? Yeah. Put it in where it's supposed to go. Yeah. And uh, Ronnie or I would turn around and just make sure the volume was, he didn't even mess with the settings. And, wow. And then he plays and it's like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> but I've, I've, I aspire to be like that too. Yeah. The, the equipment to me, certainly I have to play through the right mic and amplifier, but it's not all that important as right. a lot of guys deem it to be. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that interesting that here's this man who came from nothing and could get by on whatever you give him. Yes. You know, almost like he's just standing on Maxwell Street playing. Yeah. And uh, uh, doesn't need all the bells and whistles and pedals and this no. and that. Yeah, no. yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure you feel comfortable in your own sound with the harmonica that, uh, yeah. You know, you get to the zone rather quickly where it's like, ah, this is me now. You know, as you said, call and response. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with the amps too, because we travel a lot. I don't yeah. always get to use my stuff. Yeah. Especially in Europe. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, I've gotten some some amps that are real questionable. Uh -huh. you know, like, oh, uh -huh. what are we gonna do? You yeah. Know? And you know, Mike Welch will tell you. He goes, sure, you know. Somehow you coax the sound out of that yeah. thing. We know it's you. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, no matter what the amp is, it's right. still pretty damn good. Right, right. <laughs> I, I, I remember the last time I saw you in Europe was playing at the town hall in Bellinzona oh, for yeah. Fritz. And you oh, guys, my. you had the simplest setup in the world. You know, it was just uh, yes. simple amps. And yet you had a crowd of people on market day, Saturday morning. 
That was a memorable gig. That really was. You mentioned that really was. You did Black Knight. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just, I, and I'm seeing the photos I took then, too. Yeah. And they were, oh, my God, that's right. People were just like, yeah. you know, yeah. mesmerized. Yes, yeah. You know, part of it, too, is I think Mike adds a visual dimension to the band that you might not have had with other guitar players. Who played guitar before Mike? Well, now you're going to stump me. I, yeah, I mean. Because we did have, uh, uh, it might have been Paul Size okay, for a okay. little while. Kid okay. Bangham. Kid Bangham, yeah. That. But Mike has that, he adds a visual aspect to the band where he comes in and you and he lean in together. Oh, yeah. And uh, people are always asking him, why are you leaning on him? <laughs> yeah, sure. with, a, with like, a smile. Are you insecure or something? He goes, yeah. well, I'm going to tell you a little secret. He goes, I, I really love the sound of his voice. Yeah before it goes through the PA system. Oh, that, you know? yeah. So when I stand right next to his head like that, and leaning over, yeah, I can hear him singing, and I can really, uh, you know, work with Dig in. Him. Yeah, dig in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, you know, when you're doing Black Knight like that, and you're singing it or playing it, and Mike is leaning in and answering, God. that's just, that's compelling. It's, it's wonderfully compelling. Well, again, Sugar Ray, congratulations on all your Blues Music Award nominations. Thank you very much. I know you're going to be in Memphis in May for the, the uh, award show on, on Thursday, May 7th. We will all be there. The whole band will be there. We'll and just be there. like you did a few years ago, I'm yeah. sure you're going to be one of the performing bands. That'd be, That'd be, That'd be great. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Art Tapaldi. This is Sugar Ray Norcia uh, of Sugar Ray and the Blue Tones. We are Don O'Dell's Legends. Enjoy the show. Thank you, Art.